Welcome back, Hillside. This is week number four of us not meeting together on location at 100 Anderson Road. Welcome to you. If this is your first time uh, going to YouTube and finding our video and watching this worship service, we are glad you're with us. Uh, we have had really a great time together uh, worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ in these last few weeks. Uh, we're not together physically, but we are absolutely together in spirit. You know, worship is a decision. And so by watching this video, we're, we're making a decision to do it together. And we're also making a decision to give some worship to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is Palm Sunday, a week before Easter. That's a big deal for the church. That's a big deal for me. It's a big deal for you. We're one week before Easter. And so something special today we're going to do is we're going to share in communion together. We're going to celebrate the body of Jesus Christ that was given for us. His blood was spilled on a cross so that we could be free of our sins. That's so exciting and it's good news. I want you to right now pause this video if you need to go get some juice or bread. Now, don't think you have to go to the store. Uh, because you can use grape juice, apple juice, you can use orange juice, you can even use water. Uh, just get some liquid and together uh, we will act like it's grape juice and uh, grab some bread, crackers. I just want you to be ready because at the end of our service, I'm going to come back and I'm going to lead you and me in remembering the most important person, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have so much reason to celebrate uh, today. Easter week, we've got some special things planned for you. Please look at this email that, that was attached to this video. We're gonna release some stuff this week. Good Friday service. We're gonna do a little live stream for you. Uh, we've got some great stuff in store. I'm really excited about the day uh, today, but also this week. So let me open in prayer. Uh, let me thank God for our time of worship today. And then we're gonna, we're gonna get into it together, all right? Father in heaven, we want to say thank you for this day. You've given us another day and we are grateful. We want to say thank you for Jesus. We want to say thank you for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, we're making a decision in our homes, car, um, wherever we're watching this uh, place of work. Lord, we're making a decision right now to worship you, to give you praise and to give you honor. Lord, touch my friends that everyone today may receive from you encouragement. They may receive from you, Father, life in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hi, everybody. My name is Stacy Marks, and I'm the children's pastor at Hillside. We are so glad you're here doing this with us. Just another way to connect with Jesus and connect with each other. So we're glad you're here. Whenever you're watching it, wherever you're watching it, welcome. Our first core value at Hillside is that we believe the Bible. So today, Pastor Jordan is gonna be bringing you a word straight from scripture. And our sermon title is The Culture Within. This is all weird. I don't know about you, but social connection is so hard. And I text or Marco Polo and those messages are getting longer and longer because I just wanna connect with people. And so Hillside has some ways this week that you can connect with us and we can connect with you. The first is a prayer night on Tuesday. Come and join our live feed, pray with us, connect in worship, connect in prayer. The second is a Good Friday service, which will be live for you, join us. And then the third, Easter is coming. And even though we're not gonna be able to meet together, we're still gonna celebrate Jesus in some really special ways. And so we can still invite our friends, we can still connect with our family, so join us. These online services have become a beautiful moment for our families to worship together. But I really wanna resource your kids to be able to join you and resource you, parents, to connect your kids with Jesus. So there's two things on the app that I wanna tell you about. The first are service notes for your kids so they can have a piece of paper in front of them and take notes and draw and enjoy this service. The second is a PDF that I'm calling KidVenture at Home. And it's a really easy lesson for you to walk through with your family. Enjoy. 
Speaking of the app, it really is our communication hub right now. You can do our connect and respond cards so that we can connect with you and hear from you. You can give on the app, you can find our adventure stuff on the app, the services, so many things. So make sure you've downloaded the app today. Today, obviously, you're watching the service on YouTube. So to better connect with you, please subscribe to our channel, like it, and leave a comment. We read all of those. You can also get more information on everything that's going on at Hillside and any of our social media outlets. Hillside, we love you. These circumstances are weird, and you have chosen to intentionally connect with Jesus today. We're so proud of you. So enjoy. We're going to worship and learn about the Lord together today. We love you. That. Good clap. <laughs> Man. All right. Hello, Hillside. We're so glad to worship with you today. So why don't you take a moment to stand, find a comfortable place to worship today. Woo! All over the valley, yeah. all over the nation. Let's lift our voice to the Lord today. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me I was lost but he brought me in oh his love for me oh his love for me who the sun sets free oh is free is he I'm a child of Yes, I am. Free last, he has ransomed me. His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Oh, I am who you say I am. Yes, I am who you say I am. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I. There's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child. Thank you. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good. Oh, 
before I took a breath You breathed your life in me You have been so, so kind to me And oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99 I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away And all the overwhelming Never-ending Reckless love of God There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Come on, no shadow. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down. Come on, let's declare that again, he'll sign. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Oh, there's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. It's all it chases me. yourself away and throw the overwhelming never-ending reckless love of God Your love changes me so In 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, it says, See what love the Father has lavished upon us. Can we just take a moment today, hillside, and rest in his love? Jesus, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for the great lengths that you have gone for us to be where we are today, to be called the children of God. Bless you, Lord. Let's just sing this one last time together. deserve it still you give yourself away and holy overwhelming never ending reckless love of God yes Lord we just say thank you today for your great love your love that casts out all fear your love that has made us firm in our identity as children of you we just bless you, Lord. I ask, Lord, that you would prepare our hearts today to hear from you in a fresh way. In your name we pray, amen and amen. Hello, Hillside. We're about to receive our tithe and offering. And before we begin, I just wanted to say thank you so much for your faithful and sacrificial giving. It has been amazing to see uh, just the fruitfulness of our church and, and all the things that you've been doing and being a part of. Luke 19.10 says, The Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. 
And one of the things that I've gotten the opportunity these last few weeks is to work from home a little bit more than I'm used to. And my daughter has recently learned this game called hide and seek. And she will have lost her mini Mickey Mouse and she'll come and she'll say, Mickey Mouse is hiding. And she'll ask me to go and look for him. And, and every single time, no matter where he's at in the house, when we finally find him, she just lights up and says, there he is. And she runs, grabs him, gives him a big hug and says, I found my Mickey Mouse. And I was just thinking of Luke 19.10 where it says, the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. And I couldn't help but think that God has that same excitement when he finds people. Over the last few weeks, you know, we've gotten to, to do services online and I've gotten to call a couple of you that have been watching for the very first time. You've never attended Hillside before, but because of the online service, you're actually watching recently and new. And I want to say welcome, welcome to church, welcome to Hillside. But for those of you that have been attending for a while, there are still people coming to know Christ. There's still people coming to know who Jesus is, even through this season. I got to talk to a missionary friend of mine on Tuesday, and he was amazed. He's saying, it's been so amazing to see all these students come to know Christ, even through this season of online services and online you know, Zoom meetings and different things like that. He goes, God is still at work all across this world, and he's just looking for us to partner with him. So thank you so much for your giving. Thank you for partnering with us for thousands of years. The church has been just that, men and women that have partnered with God to seek and save the lost. So thank you so much for being a part of that. Okay, well, that's <laughs> so funny. I was about to say, find your seats. Maybe we shouldn't have set up in here. Let's move. Uh, well, happy Sunday, church. Uh, hope you are finding a place to watch this that's comfortable, maybe in your homes with your family, maybe your kids are there, uh, maybe just, it's not even Sunday for you, you just got this on your phone. Wherever you're at, I'm so glad you're here, and uh, I'm, an, I'm really excited to share the word with you and encourage you, hopefully today, and uh, just come together uh, as the church. And you know, I've, I've said it a few times over the past few weeks, and I've heard it many times, that it's kind of like God has pressed the pause button, and uh, everything was going fine, in fact. And then all of a sudden, I actually remember people saying, do you remember this? It wasn't that long ago. We were like, we're so glad 2019 is over. Let's bring in 2020. And then in what seemed like an instant, <laughs> things changed. And now 2020 has, I don't know, started off <laughs> a little rough. And, uh, but we're believing for great things to come. But my question is, is it a pause? I is it really a pause? When you pause something, or let's say when I pause something, it's usually because I'm, I'm involved with something and maybe I'm watching something and then I get kind of interrupted. So I pause it and I take care of business so that I can get back to whatever it is I was doing. I don't know if you have kids, but Vanessa, I, I'm really jealous of all those people I see in social media saying, oh, we've, we've just binged watched this show or like, you got to check out this movie. My wife and I have tried so hard to watch one movie. <laughs> I cannot do it. Like, I cannot do the, this two-hour movie is actually going to take us five hours. That's torture to me. And we tried to watch one movie, and we just kept pausing it and pausing it and pausing it until eventually, no joke, I was like, I'm done. You know, COVID, you, this, you win. I'm not, I can't even watch a movie. Uh, because we just kept pausing. And as I thought about that, and as I thought about today, is this really a pause, or is it something else? And maybe this question could help. If you could, and if you were, if it were up to you, is the life that you had three and a half weeks ago really the life that you want to unpause and get right back to? And maybe more specifically, is the spiritual life, your relationship with God, where you were at with that three and a half weeks ago, is that, is that the spiritual life, the spiritual temperature, the relationship that you want to unpause and jump right back into? Is this really a pause? Maybe it's something bigger. I, I think maybe it could be a, more like a reset button, more than just a pause. Uh, I don't know if you grew up with a Nintendo, and I'm talking the original Nintendo. I had that. And uh, I don't, uh, we, we recently got one of these like little game consoles that has all the Nintendo games, and it's like this big. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. But those games are so much harder than the games that this generation is playing today, okay? 
I've played the games with my kids, but just go open up the original Mega Man on Nintendo. It will cause you to question your faith. It is so hard. And I remember as a kid, just rage quitting that game, like trying to beat Saw Man and just, you know, boom, reset. But my Nintendo, if you held the reset button, it would kind of just pause the game. And now you were committed. There was no going back. And so I actually have a memory of somebody holding the reset so that I, I, I maybe try to finish it, but once you let go of the button, it resets the whole game. And I'm wondering, do I want this, whatever's going on, to be a pause for my life in which I jump back into normal? Or is God doing something deeper, something even stronger, a reset of sorts, and specifically for our spiritual life and our relationship with God? That's the question I want you to be thinking about. For your own life, would it be better? What would be better when it comes to God? A pause or a full reset? And just in context, for our world, for our country, uh, our state, our valley, our church, and more specifically for us today, our life. I'd like us to consider that question because wouldn't it be something if after all this, we realized that God really was up to something? I think he might be. Uh, the series that we're, that we're currently in is called The Culture Within. Pastor Eric did a great job last week talking about identity. But that word culture is an interesting one. I, I have heard that word used in a lot of different ways, specifically in the last couple of years. And there are actually, you know, different true definitions of the word. But the word I, or the definition I remember growing up as a kid, and I, I remember being in class. I can't remember where it was, but it's, the, the word was defined as way of life. Your culture is your way of life. And something that's unique about what's going on with COVID is that it has brought all cultures into this similar circumstance. Everyone from around the world in a lot of ways is underneath the same culture. All of a sudden we're, we have to have social distancing and all these rules are in place. And, and, and we're so used to Americans as things happening to us, but this is happening on a global perspective. That to me feels like God at work. Everyone all over the world is also asking this question, you know, what is going on? And when is it going to be over? And what do I do? There's been a cultural shift for every single person on the planet. I mean, that is wild. But while all that's happening, the question still should be asked, what about us? What about you and me specifically? What about the culture within? What, about, what would God have to do to get you and I to see that even in the midst of all this, what he cares about most is the culture within our heart, the culture within our life. Because while all this is happening around the world, I believe God is simultaneous, simultaneously not just doing a work, but continuing to do the work that he was doing three and a half weeks ago, three years ago, 2,000 years ago. He's continuing to pursue the hearts of men and women around the world. I don't think that's changed. And I believe that you know, really, and I've talked a lot about this probably with some of you. I, I really do believe with every fiber of my being that we're living in a very significant moment. And it's hard to recognize that when you're in it. When you read history books, I don't get the vibe that the people in those moments always could, could understand all that would change after that and all how, how we would look back and study them and be like, look at these people, what they did here, you know, but I, I think there's a chance that we're in one of those moments. There's going to be some things that are never going to be the same after this is over. Some for the better, and maybe some that will cause a change and cause some adjustment. And in that, I believe that the church and God's people are being stirred. I mean, I feel that, and I know you do too. So the question I have is, are you allowing God to do a work in your life right now? I, I think with all this madness going on, a question as simple as, as that, could get missed. Are you allowing God to do a work in your life right now? Even in the midst of all of this, are you allowing God, inviting God, asking God to do a work in your life? Or is it a pause? I wanted to be in this room because, A, I missed it. I miss you. I, I miss leading worship. I, I miss being together. But at the same time, I think it gives us an opportunity to see that this isn't the only place where God does a work in our life. 
Surely we don't believe that because these doors have to be closed for a season that the doors to the gates of heaven are closed and that the doors to, the, to our hearts are closed from the Lord. No, God is still actively at work. And, and I just wanted to come visit this place again, but I, I also want to be, uh, I needed to be reminded and I wanted to remind you that God is just as at work in your life and my life as he is when we gather here on Sundays. And it's a powerful thing to know that right now, Uh, there are people gathering around the world for church. I think it's a wonderful thing uh, because this was never about the building. The building is what was holding a group of people who were pursuing God. And I think that's important. And I want to remind you just of a couple things today. But the question I want to kind of keep on the surface of our minds is, are you allowing God to do work in your life? I know everything shifted and, and everything kind of is moving around us, but is anything shifting in you? The culture's... Getting, getting wrecked. But what about our culture, the, the culture of our hearts, the things that God's doing? Are we allowing God to do a work in us? I just want to do a couple things today. And the first one is I just want to remind you, Christian, of who the Bible says you are. I thought Pastor Eric spent a good amount of time on identity last week, and, and I wanted to kind of piggyback on that. And I just want to read this passage to remind you of who you are in Jesus. Now, if you have a Bible, I want you to get it, okay? Okay. Um, it's not awkward for me to wait for you here. I'm just here with the Pastor Eric, Pastor Brad, Caleb. We're just here waiting. So get your Bible, Ephesians chapter two, and I'm going to read it. Now, I'm not just going to read it. As I was reading Ephesians chapter two, verses one through 10, man, I was just fired up about it. I, I, I just think it's such an amazing thing. So I don't know what you got to do today, wherever you're at. If you're, if you're driving and watching this, don't do anything. Okay, just, just listen. But if you're someplace where you can stand, or you can open up the word of God and you can just participate in these words. Uh, I want you to do that. And I want to read it over you. This is what the Bible says about us. This is what the Bible says that has been done for us. And it needs to be in our hearts and minds as we're walking through this season together. Ephesians chapter two, verse one. If you want to say amen while I read, declare it over yourself. I say, do it. Verse one, and you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind. And we were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. Verse four, but God, but God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Verse eight, for by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God not a result of works so that no one may boast for we are his workmanship. We are his workmanship. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. What a powerful scripture. And you got to get that into your system while you're at home, while you're figuring out what to do. While the culture around us is struggling, the culture within is based upon the work of Jesus Christ. Not ours, not our success and our failure, but based upon who he is. It starts every day right there for every one of us. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. I'm saved. I'm chosen. I'm rescued. I'm alive. I am transformed. And maybe you've forgotten that in the last three and a half weeks. Maybe you've gotten to a place where you're just so nervous. You're so scared. You've lost your job. You, you, you don't know where you're going to live. Maybe food's even become an issue. On that, please call us. Please call the church. Please let us know. We want to help you. But maybe you've forgotten that in your heart and your mind, that you're a chosen child of the Most High God. He sees you. He loves you. He hears your prayers. And the Lord is just as much at work in your life today as he was three and a half weeks ago. He has stuff planned for you amazing things, even now. And he has something to say. Hear me. The Lord has something to say to all of us through all of this. Will you allow the space? Will you allow him to do a work in your life? Quit trying to save the culture that we had. 
three and a half weeks ago. We, 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 we got to understand that we're going to work so hard at trying to keep our normal when God's wanting us and maybe giving us an opportunity to reset and try to get back to the culture within. Because when that is something that's healthy, it makes the culture that you step into anywhere that much better, that much more clear. He has done so much to get into relationship with us. And doesn't relationship with Christ matter most now? We're not meeting uh, corporately. We're not getting to do some of the things that we get to do that sometimes fill our spiritual cup. And now it just comes down to, do I know Christ as a person? And I want to tell you, maybe you feel distant from that. Maybe you feel great. But the Bible says that he's done the work so that you can. And I want to pray for you. Some of you need to ask for forgiveness today. Some of you are watching. You just need some encouragement. You just need to be reminded that God loves you and he does. So if this is you, I just want to take a moment to pray. Now, let's just get something on the table. Pastors, I'm going to just say this. We don't ever have to say it again. It can be weird to pray over video. Who cares? Prayer is powerful. Just remember that we didn't make up the rules of prayer. The Bible says that, uh, and I'm going to read in a minute, that we have been invited into prayer. I don't see anything in the Bible that says if it's pre-recorded or if it's not going to be launched for a few days, that it doesn't count. No, I mean, God's both the beginning and the end. He's the alpha and the omega. He hears our prayers. And so if you need a touch from the love of God, I want you to just put your hands out like this, and I want to pray together. Father, we just, uh, we reset. We allow you to reset how we think and how we're moving and how we're uh, going through this season. And I just accept the love of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the work of the cross. If we need forgiveness, we just ask for it. God, I pray that you would forgive me of my sins. If you haven't made a, a commitment to Christ, do it now. God, I invite you into my life. I don't know everything about you, but your word says that you love me and that you see me. And if that's true, God, I want to follow you. Jesus, be Lord of my life. Forgive me my sins. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. And it doesn't end there. Ephesians chapter 4, just a little bit later. Look, this is important. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 21 through 24 says this, assuming that you've heard about him, him being Jesus, and we're taught in him, right? We just, we learned about what Jesus did in Ephesians chapter two. As the truth is in Jesus, this, look at what it says, verse 22, to put off your old self, someone say amen, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. Listen, I, I, let me just say, this is just Jordan's opinion, but maybe three and a half weeks ago is a life that you may need to leave behind. And the Lord says, uh, come to me today, receive me. I have something new for you. I want you to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. Verse 23, and be renewed by the spirit of your minds. I love it. And to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Not only have we been loved and not only have we been saved, but we've been transformed by the work of Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit in our life. And God is in the process right now of giving you a new way of thinking, a new way of being by the power of his Holy Spirit. And he wants to help you put off the old self and pick up a new self that's a gift from God. How wonderful, <laughs> how amazing, and uh, how very on purpose. Church, this is important. Whether we're here or whether we're wherever you are, we were destined to be a transformed people and to be a change agent to transform the rest of the world. And I would say, especially in times like this, especially in times like this. In Matthew chapter five, Jesus says, you're the, you're the light of the world. A, a, a city on a hill can't be hidden. This, this is who you are. And, and, and if I could maybe just paint the image, it, it's this, these last three and a half weeks, it's both the darkness closing in, right? And then you, get the you wake up the next morning, you look at the news and it's like, it's gonna get worse before it gets better. It's gonna get worse before it gets better. You know, and I'm almost ready for someone to lie to me. I'm ready for just one day to someone to be like, we're gonna be great. And then, you know, 24 hours later, give it to me straight. But it's like that. So how does God design it? He goes, I'm going to do the work. I'm going to come and, 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 and give my life for these people so I can give them my spirit so that on the darkest days, on the darkest seasons of history, if they look back in the year 3000 on the year 2020, 
It's going to be not a story of COVID, but a story of the church of Jesus Christ. Because we've been given the transforming power of the Holy Spirit in our life. Listen, I I wrote this to Pastor Eric in an email as we were brainstorming how we could talk about this subject. March 5th, I said, we can't expect a kingdom culture to arise in our city unless it arises in our church. And we can't expect a kingdom culture to arise in our church unless it arises in us as individuals, you know, as us as a group. And and we can't expect the kingdom culture to arise in us unless I allow it to arise in me. And and now I have to deal with those words that I was saying to Pastor Eric uh, three and a half weeks ago. And I think a move of God happens one person at a time. And that means you. And that means me. That means us realizing what used to keep me from the Lord, right? As I said, I just don't have time. I have have a hard time. (laughs) You know where I'm going with this. I have a hard time finding time to read my Bible. I have a hard time prayer. Oh, baby, I got so much time now. I don't know what to do with it. So if you're not in your word, if you're not spending time with Jesus, if you still feel like your relationship hasn't had that transformational, uh, that moment yet, well, now's the time to go, God, here I am. Help me, change me. I I want this. I want that culture within to be rich with you because a move of God happens one person at a time. Imagine the God of the universe is up to something through all of this. How wild. How, how incredibly amazing. Uh, this week, today, here's what I want you to do. If, if this is you, if anything that Ephesians is speaking to you that or I'm saying, I want you to just find some time today by yourself and just go say these, t- these three words. God, I'm ready. God, I'm ready. Because I, I don't think we need to fill in the blanks because I think God knows what we need way more than what we need. What we're saying I'm ready for is, I'm ready for you to do that work in me. I'm not going to play a game anymore. So as I close up this thought, this thought I think, let, let's at least, th- how, how as a church are we going to move forward? You know, I've been asked that question a lot. Well, what about the church and how's the church doing? I'm like, well, depends on what church you're talking about. If you're talking about the building, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's, it's doing great. Super clean. Bath, bathrooms are clean. Everything's ready to go. But I know that's not what we're talking about. How are we as a church supposed to be now when we're at home and and we're not meeting together? You know, we know we're loved. We know we've been transformed. But what about what's going on in the world? The politics, the fear, the spread of COVID, the uncertainty. What should we do and and what's going to happen here with Hillside? And to be quite honest with you, I don't know. But may I present one of my favorite passages in Scripture, and I hope it can encourage us today. Because although... The church culture has been shaken, right? All of our churches in our valley, we're not meeting all around the world. They're not meeting as they were. While that's true, the kingdom of God is going to grow because God is active and God is on the move. And there's testimonies rising up. I just heard a a testimony from pastor today that someone just drove to our church and wrote a multiple thousand dollar check because they wanted to, to help people and care about people. That's the kingdom of God at work. And so the Holy Spirit wants to show us that in this, this time, what matters most is the culture within, because then it starts to make an effect on a world that really needs some hope. So I'm going to finish with this passage. And I think it gives us, I think what I got like four quick things as we move forward as a church. And I mean, as Hillside, I know, is there really four quick things? I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to do my best. Uh, Philippians chapter four, let me read it. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, you say it, Rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. Oh, someone, someone's going to have to journal that or put that on some people's car. Let your reasonableness, church, be known to everyone. Because why? The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. Easier said than done. Yes. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. What a passage for times like this. The first thing it says, rejoice in the Lord always. Why? Well, we read about it because of what the Lord has done for our life. You might need to just take a step back and do some inventory about what the Lord has done in your life. Because what we read in Ephesians says that we're loved, that we've been chosen, and that there's things in store for us. We need to worship and rejoice while the world 
recoils from fear, we can rejoice in the hope that comes from Jesus for two reasons. One, because in this life we're loved. And the second reason is because this life isn't all there is. And that's because of what the work of Christ. And that's, that's, a, that's massive. And we need to worship in our homes and practice thanking God for what he has done. Rejoice in the Lord always, even in times like this. A.W. Tozer said, worship is no longer worship when it reflects the culture around us more than the Christ within us. It's about the culture within. Secondly, verse five, it says, let your reasonableness be known to everyone because the Lord is at hand. Second thing is we need to walk as if God is with us. You know why? Because he is. It is so about time for the church, you and I, Christians, to start living and acting and walking as if God is with us because his word says that he is. He's with you and I. Uh, start s- spreading some peace around. I love that word reasonableness. I think we can all agree. We've heard some stories about all of us losing a little bit of our reasonableness. If you physically assaulted somebody over toilet paper in the last three weeks, I'm talking about you. You know, when in times like this, it gets chaotic and we lose our reasonableness because why? Because we're afraid and we think we're alone. We got to take, it's in our hands to make sure we make it. There isn't even toilet paper. How could you possibly be reasonable? Why? It's because the Lord is at hand. We've been given a promise. God said he would never leave us or forsake us. Jesus is the reward of this, right? So Jesus is the reward. His presence, his leadership, his guidance, his peace, his help, him. He's the reward. And therefore we can have reasonableness even in times like this because he's with us and we have a greater purpose as believers. Number three says, don't be, uh, verse verse seven or verse six says, you don't have to be anxious about anything. (laughs) Oh, Cool. Uh, You know, like these verses always go down better in other times, but now when we're anxious, can I admit to you, I have been anxious, right? There's, it's like this. Some days I'm waking up and I'm a pillar of faith in my family. I'm like, let's get up. Let's prayer walk this house. And the other days I just get out of bed. I'm like, it's over. (laughs) You know, my kids have been up for two hours. We don't have any more eggs. (laughs) I'm done. But the Bible says, it doesn't say this. It doesn't say, it doesn't say that if you're anxious, you're sinning. It says, don't be anxious but instead trade it in for prayer. Trade it in for, the, for prayer. The Bible says, come to, to the, come to the Lord with all that stuff. We go, we bottle that stuff up and we just watch the news and we just, we could have our friends on the phone. We're like, it's going to be the, it's going to be crazy. Has anybody gone to God recently? Has anybody gone in the room and closed the door behind them and don't come out until the anxiety is left at the foot of the cross? That is what we've been invited to do. And the, and the best part, is in verse seven, basically God does the rest. He says, and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Well, what? This is a verb. Guard you. Guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but I I need some of that right now. I, I need the Lord to guard my heart and mind because it's like this, but you know who's not like this? The Lord. He's consistent. His word is true and, and he's with you. He's not expecting you to have this thing figured out. The, the goal of this sermon at the end of it is to not is not to be like, and so therefore you should not have any feelings about what's going on. Just be a good Christian. No, I'm saying just be a normal person. You have anxieties just like you and I, or me and you, we have them, but we can go to the Lord. We can trade that in for prayer. Man, prayer is a powerful tool. If you're looking for ways to pray or just some help, you can check out the Hillside app. Uh, there's some great resources for prayer. And actually next week, April 7th, We're going to have a prayer night uh, online that you can be a part of. We'll get some more information to you. But we pray because we know the Lord's listening. And he says that I can trade in my anxiety for prayer. And it's going to be a powerful thing for you. And rejoice in the Lord always. Let your reasonableness be known to men because the Lord is at hand. And trade in your anxiety. I know. Maybe it feels like a pause. And in a lot of ways it is. But you know what? I'm actually praying that it's a reset. I, 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 I'm praying that God would reset us back to our first love, that God would reset us back to the basics, his word, his presence, and loving people. I, I'm praying that God is resetting us and giving us a culture within that echoes the halls of heaven. His prayer, when, when they asked him, Jesus, what should we pray? He said, pray this, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We need to be praying that prayer right now. 
Today, God, transform me. Transform my prayer life. Transform my Bible reading. Transform what I think of myself. Transform how I deal with these circumstances. I need you. I want your Holy Spirit. Lord, I want the culture within my heart to be something that shines a light in times of darkness. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Christ. I'm not trying to hide. I'm not just bunk, you know, hunkering down and waiting until this thing's over so I can press the unpause button and go back to life as normal. I'm here to tell you, not to scare you. Life is not going to be the same way it was three and a half weeks ago. It's going to be different. And so what is important to, to realize is that even before that, God had a plan and purpose for our life and for our church. And he still does today. Not just Hillside, but the church around the world. And he's actively working on that. But a move of God happens with one person at a time. Revival happens one person at a time. And so Lord, if you're looking to start a revival, start it in us. Amen? That should be our prayer. That should be a prayer for yourself as an individual and ourself for a church and then for our world. Lord, if you're looking to start somewhere, start with me today. Here I am. In fact, if, if, if that's you, I want you to stand in your home or wherever you're, you're at. If you're feeling like you want to say that prayer, Lord, if you're looking to start a revival, start it in me. Um, I want you to stand your feet. I want to pray over you. And I hope that as this continues, you would allow the Holy Spirit to begin to transform the culture within so that when the time is right and things start to become more normal, we wouldn't settle for anything less than what God has done in us. So if you're standing, I, I, I want to say a few things over you. I just want to I want to say that God is going to do a great work in your life. His word says so. His word said in Ephesians that he has things in store for you when we go to him. And those things are not on pause. And those things are not waiting until this is over. Those things have already begun. And God wants to speak specifically to you. And church, Hillside specifically, by the time we get back into this room, I pray that we're a different people, a, a people on fire for the Lord a people hungry to worship, hungry to pray, hungry to serve, hungry to know more about God. And so while all these chairs are empty right now, they're not empty of God's presence. He's doing a work in our life. So by the time we meet in here, however that is, the work of the Lord had already been started a while ago and uh, ready to go. Let me pray for you. And uh, we'll just close our time. Father, I just thank you so much for my friends and uh, all around the valley, all around the world, even potentially watching this video. And uh, God, I just pray for your spirit to be upon them right now. For those men and women, those um, young and old who are saying, Lord, if you're looking to start something, start into me. I pray that you would right now in Jesus' name. Those people who asked you to forgive them today, I pray that they would feel your touch. They would feel your love. We thank you, God, that even in times like this, you're at work. We trust you and we step into the work and the call and the things that you've prepared for us beforehand. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'm so thankful for that message that Pastor Jordan just delivered. Such a practical word about um, what we're to do in this time that we're living in. To, to rejoice, um, to cast our cares, on the Lord because He cares for us. Put our anxiety on Him and exchange it for prayer. That's so incredible, so wonderful. Um, I hope, hope and pray uh, that word manifests in you this whole week. Right now I'm holding in my hands uh, a cup of grape juice and a piece of bread. And uh, I grabbed these elements uh, from one of the backs of the chairs in our auditorium. Uh, just to remind you and to remind me that we're together in this. As if we were doing this on a Sunday together, right now on Sunday, um, maybe it's not Sunday for you and that's all right, maybe it's Monday, maybe it's Tuesday, but we are together in this right now. Jesus had his disciples gathered around him. Um, it was the Last Supper, it was Passover, it was the night he was going to be betrayed. This was the week. This was the week many, many years ago when Jesus was betrayed. And he had bread, he had a cup of juice or wine at this Passover celebration. And he said to his disciples, he passed them this bread and he said, do this in remembrance of me. And today we wanna to take this bread in remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ and his great sacrifice for us. 
We also want to take this cup, which was the third cup in the celebration of Passover. It was the cup of blessing. And we want to remember today the incredible blessing that we have because of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross. The blessing of resurrection. The story, our story, doesn't end with death. The story of Jesus doesn't end with death. It ends with an empty grave. Jesus rises again, and you and I will rise again. We will be resurrected, and uh, it's all because of Jesus. Father in heaven, we take one more moment to celebrate you, to worship you, because of your great sacrifice for our, our lives, to wash away our sin. Thank you, Jesus. Let's take the bread together. Remember our Lord Jesus Christ. and the cup to remember our Lord Jesus Christ today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I wanna thank you um, for joining us in worship today. Thank you for uh, pressing in, even in those uncomfortable moments or maybe distracting moments in your home or wherever you're watching this video. Thank you for worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you um, to hit like on this video, to subscribe to our YouTube channel, to become friends with us on Facebook or Instagram. Why would I invite you to do that? Because there are still hundreds, thousands, millions of people around the world who don't know who Jesus Christ is. They don't know about the forgiveness and the love and the peace that our God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ offers us. And so by you liking, subscribing, becoming friends with us, it helps us spread the word about Jesus and the forgiveness of our sins and life eternal in his name. Happy Easter week. We're gonna see you real soon because we have a lot of stuff planned this week to celebrate who Jesus is. God bless you.